Hi everyone, how's it going? Team here and this is BXJS, a show about building things with JavaScript. And today I want to talk a bit about testing your code. Why do we need to test code? What kind of tests are there? And to list a set of my favorite tools that I use pretty much on a daily basis to test my own projects. So we're going to start with um, what the tests are, why do we need them and different approaches to writing them. I'm going to be using jests throughout the whole tutorial because this is my framework of choice simply because of the features and the simplicity of, of setup. So there's like zero configuration setup, instant feedback and snapshot testing that make it pretty much amazing and integration with React because Jest is made by Facebook team. So here I have the basic project setup that only has a Jest as a dev dependency, which we're gonna use uh, to show you what is uh, test driven development and how do you approach it and why do we need tests in general and you know what is test coverage and all and so on and so forth. So let's start by creating a test file that we're going to call main uh, test.js. And now I'm going to talk a bit about the test approaches. So there's basically two of them. First one is what I guess uh, majority of people does is code first, test last. So you write the code and then you cover it with tests. This is my uh, approach of choice basically. And then there's uh, test first, code last, right? So this is what you would call also test driven development. And I know that, you know, some people, um, prefer that approach. Uh, in my opinion, none of this is superior to another one It's just different ways of thinking, right? So uh, for some people, it is easier to think in tests first and to outline their whole app and test and then write the code to make it work. While for others, like for example, for me, it is easier to write the code first and then cover it with tests to make sure it doesn't break over time, right? Where you're changing libraries or changing your code or refactoring or something like this. But uh, because it took me quite some time uh, due to the way that requires you to think uh, to figure out test driven development, I want to show you how it is basically done on a very simple example. And this is what we're going to do. So we created a um, simple test file that is called main.test.js. So this .test.js endings is automatically picked up by the jest and will be executed as tests. And in this case, we're gonna say that we wanna test a simple addition uh, app, right? So say we have a test here. This is how you define tests. This is a jest function. In this case, we're gonna name it. So uh, let's say that it should add two numbers, right? So this is just a string for humans. So that whenever humans see that the test pass, they know that, okay, it actually added two numbers. Um, I typically tend to start the test names from the uh, verbs to make sure that you know, actually know what the hell is going on there. It's sort of more descriptive. You can you can name it the way you want, basically. It doesn't matter. It's just like kind of a convention, I guess. So um, if you would write code first, then you would already know what kind of function you have and what you're gonna call, right? In this case, we don't know. So, but we know what we wanna see, right? So say we have result. And uh, then I'm gonna define here a function that's gonna be just a function that does nothing, no op, right? So, and then I'm gonna say that our function should add two numbers and uh, we will expect, so again, this is a just thing expect. We'll expect this function to equal, this is also just um, API four, right? So we wanna add two and two and we want it to be four. So right now, if I go to the uh, command line and execute, um, yeah, that's a bad idea. So I guess I should probably add it to package JSON over here because it's a local package. So we won't be able to call it directly. If I execute just, it's gonna fail, right? So it's gonna say, hey, I'm failed because it's not four and result is actually undefined. So you can see the jest is very helpful at giving you the problem. So now they even have the snippets of code that point you to exact point where the test failed. So you know, this is another nice, to it. So what do we need to make it work? Well, we need to define this function as a b and we return a plus b, right? So this is this is our test. Now it should pass. And this is essentially the test driven development. You first create your test and then you create your uh, code, which makes those tests pass. That's basically all that is to it. And I mean, there are obviously more tricks, but essentially this is all you will be doing. And I know that for some people, once I, again, as I said, um, this will be easier, but for me, this is actually harder to think this way. So I prefer a different approach. So const function require. So I moved the, our code into main function so that we actually can um, extract it. 
And uh, now, so here's the trick. Now we're going to be talking about code coverage. So if we look at this, if I say npm test and I pass minus minus coverage, I believe, we're going to see that we have 100% coverage. So uh, some people are obsessed about this number. They want to have 100% coverage on everything. In my opinion, that is actually um, not a very good metric of showing how well tested your code is, right? Because right now we, I mean, we have one line of code, literally, <laughs> and it is 100% covered through this test. Well, the thing is, if we add another test, uh, should not break, right? So if we say add a test and we say, um, I'm just gonna copy this. Um, Let's assume, I mean, the, the thing is that you can never assume user input, right? Users always will find a way to break it. So what will happen if we do that? Well, let me tell you, it's gonna break, right? So it's not gonna work. It's gonna return a string that is gonna be two, two, like 22 basically, yeah? But it's a string. We didn't expect that. We still have 100% coverage, but our software breaks. And this is, I know that this is a very contrived example. It's not maybe a very good one, but it demonstrates that even when you have 100% coverage, your app will still break if there are some very um, unusual bugs, something un something is unvalidated, something be like comes in unexpectedly. The user input is especially a thing that will break your app in places you didn't even expect it to do. Um, and in my opinion, you shouldn't chase this 100% coverage. You should just focus on testing your uh, core things, right? So making sure that core of your app functions as expected. And then, well, once user comes in and says, hey, you know, this doesn't work, you just create another test that makes sure that works in the next versions. Right. So this is very basic approach to system development. Why we need, by the way, test coverage is not the solution to your failing app. And now let's talk a bit about more complex things. So there's this repo that I created. It's called intro testing uh, under B uh, building with JS uh, GitHub. Uh, this is what I've done during the live stream. Uh, we're gonna test a small app with just Synon and Noc. So those are three different libraries that do slightly different things, but they are all used for testing. And uh, you can check out the code and uh, see it for yourself. So I'm going to talk a bit about that. Oh, by the way, there is additional thing I want to show you. So there's this um, VS Code Jest plugin that basically allows you to see your tests fail or run inline, right? So if we have this test file here and I say Jest start runner, we are actually going to see that our tests, well, they for some reason uh, fail here. I'm not sure, maybe they, I've actually updated the Jest version, so maybe they fail because of that, but that is a bit weird. Uh, but theoretically, basically, if you have this project set up correctly, you can see the results of test runs right away, which is quite nice. So I'm gonna stop it because I don't want it to mess. The problem with it is that sometimes it messes with the parallel execution when you have it. Um, too many restarts, okay. And uh, once again, if we go to that project and run npm test, I hope it passes. Yeah, there you go. So it passes perfectly fine. We get 100% line coverage once again, but that doesn't mean that it works perfectly as I already outlined. So what do we do here? Well, the app, let's talk about the app itself, right? So the app itself is a command line app that takes in um, two arguments, ID and the name of the item from the uh, Steam, uh, community market. So if you're not familiar, Steam is a gaming platform and they have this market for the games where they sell things. For example, there's this uh, Gamescom Invitational Crate. As you can see here, it has an ID and it has a name, right? And by this ID and name, we can get a price data that um, you in the S enter, it will default to Gamescom Crate. It will show us the prices for it, the volume of market. And if we say yes here, it will actually open it here in the browser. So this is a page opened in the background, right? And we're gonna test that. So there is a bunch of uh, things that you wanna test here. First of all, uh, you might wanna test the get data function that actually fetches the data, right? So this is what we do right here. And uh, the thing about it, so this is what you would call a unit test, right? Because you have one small unit that you're testing, which is in this case a function and um, we are basically getting the data and then expecting it to match a snapshot. So um, this is something uh, that is a just specific thing. I mean, there is a separate snapshot testing libraries, but this is uh, integrated into Jest. And what it does is that instead of you saying, um, 
to equal and then you know pass in the whole object with your own data that is should be test data you just say to match snapshot and just will uh, make a snapshot for you which you can inspect over here so this is the first snapshot for example right you can just have a look okay this is correct and then whenever you run the test it will just compare the results and match it to this snapshot so it's very handy just one line of code everything does for you now the problem here is um, that when we call this get data function, it actually does a remote request, right? It actually queries the Steam community, as you can see here, and gets the data from there. Uh, the thing is that this data is volatile. So if I now remove uh, knock, which I am using um, to mock the HTTP request, we will see that the test will start failing. So the test will start failing because the data no longer matches snapshot because price changes, median price changes, volume changes, right? So this no longer works. And you cannot really test without uh, knowing all this data, right? So you need to have a correct snapshot. So here where the knock comes in. So knock is a HTTP mocking library and it allows you to fake responses. So basically, you can use it in uh, Node.js and it works extremely well. And basically wherever I had uh, anything to do with HTTP requests, I use knock for mocking them. Uh, what we do in this case, we take the uh, URL that will be fetched by the client and we knock the Steam community. We knock this URL gets, we will do it three times because we test three different things there. We reply with 200 and then our test data array that will be assumed uh, to match snapshot every time, right? That's about it. That is basically how you use knock. It supports just about all that you want to get. Uh, get post requests, uh, request matching using regular expressions, even, you know, function to match stuff, specifying the body so you can match the specific body and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of features. Uh, link will be in the description as usual. Go have a look at it. Uh, it is a pretty great tool. And as, as I said, I've been using it for quite some time. Great. So the next thing we're going to test the... Um, data rendering, right? So first thing we tested, we get the data. The next thing we test, we should uh, see that like when we invoke the, uh, come on, when we invoke index.js, we see that this, this data, right? We should make sure that it actually output it correctly. And this is what you would call an integration test, right? Because you check if your units, your simple data fetchers and so on and so forth, integrate correctly with data fetching. So there are two problems here. Uh, problem number one is that we have the prompt from inquirer, which is a um, asking library. So basically it's a library that allows you to ask user for uh, using a yeah, common command line interfaces. In this case, we are asking user if he wants to open a browser or not. It's a simple yes or no, but still we have to answer that somehow, right? And inquirer use this prompt function. And then we use this open uh, package that opens a browser. So obviously when we're testing, we don't want to do that. We just want to make sure it's called and that's it, right? So first of all, let's just make sure that the rendering is correct. And by default, it's going to say no. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to use a Synon, uh, which is a test uh, like standalone test spice stubs and mocks, which means you can uh, watch for uh, things to like how are they called, with what context, what arguments, so on and so forth, we're gonna use that. You can stop things, meaning you can fake their responses and you can mock things, meaning you can replace things completely. It works with any unit testing framework and it's a very handy uh, thing that is basically, again, I've used in quite a lot of places. So in this case, we're first we're gonna use a synonym to stop the prompt function from inquirer to reply open browser false. So this is basically gonna auto resolve here and it is going to reply false. So we're going to skip this if, right? And then we're going to spy on console. Uh, we're going to spy on a log method to actually capture all of this output. And again, to match it to snapshot. So if we have a look at the snapshots here, you will see that it actually is uh, the exact output. So those uh, square brackets are denotes of the colors and uh, highlights and all that kind of stuff. So ASCII uh, chalk method, right? Uh, so what we do is we spy on console log, then we execute our uh, handler with the test data. 
we restore the console uh, to make sure that we didn't capture more than required. Then we compare it to snapshot and then we restore the inquirer stop to again, free it up for next tests. Right. And the last test, we're going to test that it actually calls the browser. So the first bit of the test is exactly the same as the previous one. Uh, but we have this open here that we expect to be called. Again, this is a JEST API. Um, but in this case, we cannot really, you cannot really uh, ask the library if you, know, if you have been opened. So it's like you cannot really ask about uh, something like this, a function. So what we're going to do, we're, we're going to mock this open, right? So um, handily for us, JEST has a mock function that replaces any module before you require it with a, a mock function. So just has integrated support for mocking. Uh, it is not as powerful as Synon's methods, but still, you know, it's works for 90% of cases, I guess. So in this case, if we look at mock functions and uh, you will see that basically you can generate a mock function by using just FN or again, just mock will mock the whole module which uh, then will basically allow you access to things like, you know, mock calls, mock instances, clear reset and so on and so forth. So in our case, we're just want to know if it has been called, uh, which means I think it just compares mock calls uh, to the like number more than one, right? And this is it. So in reality, open is not called, but we can actually expect um, or uh, reassure, um, what, what's the correct word? We can actually test that it. it's been opened, right? So I'm I'm being terribly bad at speaking today, but uh, yeah, there you go. So one test, so this is integration test again, right? One thing we're missing from this example is end-to-end -end testing. Uh, just is, you can use it with end -to -end, for end-to-end -end testing in a browser, although one would argue that something like Cypress IO is probably better for this case, right? So this is, if you haven't seen it, it's a pretty great uh, open source end-to-end -end testing framework um done by a bunch of pretty great guys and uh it's very easy to set up and very cool to use so if you are looking for something like this do have a look at it but just is more low level let's put it this way so in this case if we would want to end-to-end -end test it we would actually need to run index here with some data and then make sure that the output is actually what we want to see right uh, but yeah i guess i we're not going to talk about this here Right, so I think I've covered all I wanted to talk about in this video. So if you have any questions with regard to uh, testing or some of those parts were not clear, feel free to ask in the comments or come to the Discord channel, ask there. I'm always happy to help. Hopefully this will uh, help you to get started with the test. So I should mention that, you know, some people go like, oh, you test all your projects. You probably done this from the very beginning. You're so good with it and la la la. And reality is I've been programming for about first, I guess, six years without ever writing one test. And now that I'm looking back at it, it was terrible because if you have tests, you can rely on them when refactoring, for example, right? You change your code, you change some libraries, replace one with another with faster one or better one with API. And when you run tests, you can make sure that your project actually works, still works after all your changes with the code. If you don't have them, you have to do all the tests manually, which is, well, not a very nice thing to do and takes a lot of time. It's way easier to just say NPM test and see the results going there, right? So having this test will easily allow me to replace, for example, Yargs with something else, right? Because I don't, I have tests that will tell me if I screwed up and failed something. Yeah, that's basically all I wanted to say. Thank you for watching. And as usual, I see you next time. Bye.